You always go first. <laughs> no, I've never done it without Henry here. Hi, I'm James. I'm one member of Bitloom, a little game development studio here in Dundee, and I'm a programmer on the team. Hi, I'm Douglas. I am also a member of the team, and I handle the art side of the team. And we are missing Henry, our third member, who handles programming with James and also does all of our yeah, if I had to describe myself in one word, I'd probably say <laughs> silly. <laughs> uh, chill. The three of us studied at Aberte University here in Dundee, and we were all on games courses, so we met outside of class at Game Jams, which are short periods of time where you make a game together. Um, I actually knew Henry from high school, we studied together way back when we were teenagers, and both decided to come to Aberté. My first memory of Doug, which I only realised was him later on, I had taken a module that was kind of a bridge between art and programming, and Henry and I were both sitting there and desperately trying to figure out how the hell you do this animation stuff. And we look over and the person in front of us is like way ahead. <laughs> like on the first day they've already done everything we're supposed to do. Their stuff looks way cooler than anyone else's. We're working with little boxes or something. And I only found out later on that that was Doug. And we're pretty lucky to get one of the best animators who came out of that course and that year to come and work with us and somehow make all the cool art in our games. And then, in that module, we got to the scripting half, and I look around and I've got a handful of garbage bits of lines of code that will do nothing for me, and everyone else is procedurally generating some <laughs> crazy things. <laughs> I think it went both ways. Yeah, I guess so. I think it was mostly the horrifying living realisation that uni was coming to an end and we were a job or something, we were like, that's scary. What if we just did something silly together <laughs> instead? <laughs> and there was uh, a day every summer of a competition called Dare Academy. So we applied to that with a little prototype that we kind of put together at the end of during our last year. And got accepted to that, and so we spent that summer working on that prototype a bit more. And eventually, that turned into our first game that worked on the company. Our debut game was Fogs, which we started developing back in 2017 when we were finishing uni. <laughs> and you can see a fog just here on my neck <laughs> double ended dog adventure, where you and your friend control one end of a long, wobbly dog, and we released it in late 2020, which was really successful, and so now we've been able to keep working and we've got a new project that we're hopefully going to announce soon. The year after the game came out, the BAFTA, Scottish BAFTAs came around, and so we applied, and we were really lucky to be one of the three games nominated. So. We, Doug and Henry both went to the awards, and although we didn't win, it was still really cool to be nominated and have the game recognised, and I played the game that did win, and I think it deserves the award, and they're a much smaller team, so it's cool that... Much smaller. Three people. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they're one person smaller. But, yeah, it's cool to see that smaller games are being recognised on such like a big awards show, and Hopefully, lots of people saw the game and went and played it. <laughs> I don't know if that happened, but yeah. that'd be nice. Well, it's a very silly story. We decided to make something. We wanted to see if we could come up with a cool idea that would carry us past university. And so the three of us went into this little room in the university that we called the oven and started racking our brains for ideas. and. One of us just said the words dog golf and drew this little sketch of a golfer 
with a dog attached to them. And every time the golfer hit the ball, the dog would run after it and pull the golfer along, and it was supposed to be really chaotic. And within about a minute, we realized that that wouldn't be fun at all. Why don't we just go with two dogs? <laughs> and I think that weekend, Henry and I went and made a little prototype where you're just these boxes that were tied together and you're kind of rolling around a little uh, room and that became Fox. I think the like the core like guide for us once we had like the very roughest idea was just trying to make a co-op game which is like a game where two players work together where you were basically forced to work together as much as physically possible <laughs> <laughs> and you know, having you basically controlling one half of the same creature. One of the things that Henry always says is that Fogs ties you together in real life and in the game. And because you share each person has half a controller, you're kind of encouraged, like Doug said, you're encouraged to work together and you kind of start thinking as one being. Honestly, there's something that always comes into my mind is like one of the first times we showed the game off at an event and we had a kid come up and play it and come back later on to play the game again because they loved it so much and we actually had to ask them to leave because we were like supposed to be wrapping up and like packing our stuff to get on the train and they were still there playing the game and I think trying the controller out that kid's <laughs> hands was your biggest <laughs> achievement <laughs> But I think there's something to be said about we spend so much time making these games in our own little bubble and when we can actually like see people enjoying them and realize that no matter what we do, if somebody at the other end is enjoying it and having fun, that's kind of what matters and like obviously it's a business in some respects but it's also just something we really enjoy doing is making these new experiences that people can like remember and maybe that kid when they grow up is going to be like oh yeah one of my favorite games when I was growing up was Fox. <laughs> we haven't publicly announced our next game but it's a little bit different to Fox. it's still cute and colorful and hopefully people play it with their friends um, and one of the main differences is that we're doing it as a self-published game so because of the success of Fox, we're able to take some time to handle things ourselves and manage our own time, which has been really nice, but also has provided lots of challenges in terms of making sure the game's still going to be visible to people and having some marketing people working on the game. So yeah, it's exciting and it's really kind of unknown what's going to happen next because obviously there's always a risk involved with any project, but fingers crossed it does well. <laughs> I think one of the things we've realized is for us to function, we need to look after ourselves. <laughs> That's a huge problem just with any creative pro project is taking the time to actually make sure you're okay and <laughs> that you can keep working because for us to just like grind ourselves to dust <laughs> isn't going to help anything. And I think the smaller that our projects are, the easier that's going to be, but it's still a challenge. And we're still working out how to do that in a way that's really sustainable and that we can keep going. <laughs> Be weird. Be like, weird. Especially if you're in a smaller team working on something that you don't know you can do. I feel like if you and your team have a weird niche that you're know, like, we love this thing, then I would just do that because rather than So many games, as well as so many games that get released like every day. Same sector, space. So if you can be doing something different than no one else is doing, or even just your part of a small niche, that there will be a lot of people out there who are looking for that thing. I think you have. I think if you are able to find those like local groups right now, especially when we 
we're still kind of coming out of isolation, just make use of them. <laughs> Go and put yourself out there because, like, I'm pretty bad at doing that, but when I do, it makes such a difference. And to know that there are other people in the world outside of your little bubble makes everything so much more enjoyable and, like, just immediately gives me so much motivation to get back and keep going and just keep up the work. <laughs> so I'll answer as if I'm Henry and it sounds way cooler. <laughs> yeah, I've been crocheting for a few years now. I made this dog. You know, professional quality. Uh, three pounds. You can find my eBay, my Etsy page. <laughs> Play hundreds of Yeah. No, we're not as interesting as that. <laughs> <laughs>